Imagine walking along a quiet beach, the sand warm beneath your feet, stretching endlessly in every direction. To most, this sand is nothing more than the backdrop for a day at the shore, each grain a tiny, unremarkable piece of earth. Yet hidden within those grains lies the foundation of our modern world, silicon dioxide, the raw material from which the digital age itself is built. The transformation from this humble sand to the silicon chips powering smartphones, computers, cars, and the very infrastructure of our daily lives is a journey of extraordinary precision, scientific mastery, and relentless innovation. The story begins with sand, ordinary to the eye, but extraordinary in its potential. Silicon dioxide, SiO2, is the primary component, a compound formed by the union of silicon and oxygen. Silicon is the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust, making it plentiful and easily accessible. But abundance alone does not explain its dominance in electronics. Silicon possesses unique properties. It is a natural semiconductor, meaning it can conduct electricity under certain conditions, making it ideal for controlling the flow of current in a circuit. This versatility is the key reason silicon became the backbone of the semiconductor industry. Turning raw sand into usable silicon is the first crucial step. The journey begins with chemical reduction. Sand is mixed with carbon and heated in a powerful furnace to temperatures exceeding 2,000 degrees Celsius. At these extreme temperatures, carbon reacts with the oxygen in silicon dioxide, stripping it away and leaving behind molten silicon. The result is metallurgical grade silicon, about 98 to 99% pure. While impressive, this level of purity is insufficient for the demands of electronics, where even the tiniest impurity can cause catastrophic failures in microscopic circuits. To reach the required purity, the silicon undergoes further refinement. Two primary methods are used, the Siemens process and zone refining. In the Siemens process, silicon is converted into a volatile compound, trichlorosilane, then distilled and decomposed back into elemental silicon, leaving most impurities behind. Zone refining, on the other hand, involves passing a molten zone along a silicon rod, with impurities migrating ahead of the melt zone, eventually being removed. Through these processes, silicon can reach a purity of 99.9999% or higher, so-called electronic grade silicon. At this level, a single foreign atom among billions of silicon atoms can be significant, underscoring the extreme precision required. Once purified, the next step is to create a single flawless crystal of silicon. This is achieved through the Chokralski process, a marvel of materials engineering. A small seed crystal of silicon is dipped into a vat of molten purified silicon. The seed is slowly pulled upward and rotated at the same time, causing silicon atoms to lock onto its structure in perfect alignment. The process continues until a long cylindrical ingot of single crystal silicon, sometimes weighing over 100 kilograms and measuring more than a meter in length, emerges from the molten bath. The diameter of these ingots is typically 300 millimeters, about 12 inches, although both smaller and larger variants exist. What matters most is the crystal's purity and the absence of defects, as even the smallest imperfection can render entire sections of a wafer unusable. With the single crystal silicon ingot complete, it is time to slice it into wafers. This is done using high-precision diamond wire saws, which cut the ingot into thin disks, each about 0.7 millimeters thick. These wafers, fragile yet resilient, are then carefully lapped and polished to create a flawless, mirror-like surface. The polishing process is so precise that the flatness of the wafers is measured in fractions of a micrometer, thinner than a human hair. But the journey does not end there. Each wafer must be carefully prepared before it can host the intricate patterns of a semiconductor chip. The first step is oxidation, in which the wafer is exposed to oxygen at high temperatures, forming a thin layer of silicon dioxide on its surface. This layer acts as an insulator, crucial for isolating different components of the circuit from one another. Next, the wafer undergoes chemical mechanical polishing, a process that ensures the wafer is perfectly flat, 
essential for the subsequent steps of chip fabrication. Now, the true artistry of chip making begins. Photolithography. The wafer is coated with a light-sensitive material known as photoresist. Using extraordinary precision, the wafer is aligned with a photomask, which contains the circuit's pattern. Ultraviolet light is then projected through the mask, etching the intricate design onto the wafer. Where the light strikes, the photoresist undergoes a chemical change. Developers then wash away the exposed or unexposed regions, depending on the type of photoresist used. What remains is a precise, microscopic stencil of the circuit design. Following photolithography, the wafer moves to the etching stage. Etching can be done with chemicals, wet etching, or plasma, dry etching, and it removes unwanted silicon, or silicon dioxide, in the areas defined by the pattern. This process creates the first of the wafer's tiny structures, transistors, wires, and other vital components, all at a scale invisible to the naked eye. At this point, the silicon remains a blank slate, unable to control electrical signals. That capability comes through doping, or ion implantation. In this process, specific areas of the wafer are bombarded with ions of elements such as boron or phosphorus. These dopants alter the electrical properties of the silicon, creating regions with excess electrons, N-type, or holes, P-type. The precise placement and concentration of these regions make it possible to build transistors. The digital switches at the heart of every chip, but a modern chip is far more than a simple collection of transistors. It is a multi-layered masterpiece with dozens to hundreds of layers stacked atop one another. Layer by layer, the wafer undergoes repeated cycles of photolithography, etching, doping, and thin film deposition. In thin film deposition, Techniques like chemical vapor deposition, CVD, or physical vapor deposition, PVD, are used to lay down insulating or conductive materials only a few atoms thick. Between these layers, metal interconnects, typically made from copper or aluminum, are deposited to form the wiring pathways that connect millions or billions of transistors into a functioning circuit. The repetition of these steps each demanding extreme cleanliness and precision, gradually builds up the complex architecture of a semiconductor chip. For the most advanced chips, this process can involve more than 100 separate layers, with features as small as two or three nanometers, thousands of times smaller than the width of a human hair. Once the layers are complete, the wafer undergoes electrical testing. Tiny probes touch down on each individual chip, called a die, to check for functionality. Those that fail to meet strict performance standards are marked for disposal, while the remainder move on to the next stage. It is now time to separate the individual dies. Using high precision saws, the wafer is diced into hundreds or thousands of tiny chips. Each die is then carefully picked up and placed into a protective package. Packaging serves two purposes. It guards the delicate silicon from physical damage and environmental contaminants and it provides the electrical connections through tiny wires or solder bumps that enable the chip to communicate with the outside world. Before they leave the factory, the packaged chips undergo final testing. Here, they are scrutinized for speed, power consumption, and reliability under a range of conditions. Only those that pass every test are deemed ready for shipment to device manufacturers, where they will be integrated into the next generation of computers, smartphones, cars, and countless other devices. From start to finish, the journey from sand to silicon chip is one of remarkable transformation. What begins as common beach sand is purified, crystallized, sliced, polished, patterned, layered, and packaged through a process spanning several weeks to months. The end result, a chip smaller than a fingernail packed with billions of transistors, each one an on-off switch that together can perform billions of calculations per second. This transformation is not merely a technical feat, it is the foundation of the information age. The relentless march of progress, as described by Moore's law, has driven features on chips from micrometers to nanometers, empowering exponential advances in computing power. The devices we rely on every day from the simplest digital watches to the most powerful supercomputers 
owe their existence to this astonishing journey, from the grains of sand beneath our feet to the silicon chips at the heart of our modern world. The next time you hold a smartphone, type on a laptop, or marvel at the rapid pace of technological change, remember that at the core of every digital device lies a remarkable story. A story that begins with humble sand and ends with the most advanced technology humanity has ever created. Each chip is a testament to human ingenuity, an intricate tapestry woven from science, engineering, and imagination, connecting the world in ways once thought impossible. And it all starts with a single grain of sand.